Hi again, I'm Jason. I teach non-technical people like myself how to build apps without writing one line of code. This is part three of a mini series called how to build a Twitter clone in Bubble. In the previous two videos, we built a simple sign in login screen, which redirects to a blank page we called feed. We then built a profile page where the user can edit profile details such as username, profile photo, and bio. Today, we're gonna build out the main functionality of the app and give the user the ability to tweet and see a list of tweets from other users. All right, let's take a look at the Twitter feed to get some inspiration. Main features of this page are the what's happening box and the list of tweets. So let's start with the what's happening box, which we can use to type and save our tweets. Heading back to bubble and taking a look at our element list, we can use a multi-line text input element for that. So I'm going to drag it onto the screen. This is actually the sign up login screen. No! So let's change the screen. We're going to use the feed page. And we had a placeholder here. We don't need this anymore. Let's drag that multi-line input now. And for now, I'm just going to change the placeholder to what's happening. What's up? Next, we need a tweet button. So let's just copy this edit profile button we have. Copy and paste. And I'll move it up here. And we'll change the name to tweet. Now remember that after we add a button to a screen, we need to set up actions and program it to do something. So the first thing we should be thinking about here is what kind of data types and fields we need. You can think of a data type like a type of list. For example, if we look back at Twitter, right away we can see that there is a list of tweets. So the main data, data type we need for this page is tweets. Now let's head to one of my tweets. Each tweet has a few fields associated with it. For example, we'll need the tweet itself. We'll need the date. We'll need the user posting the tweet and maybe the number of likes it has. In this case, only one. We can set this all up in the data section in Bubble, so let's head there. Bubble comes preloaded with the user table, which we used in the last video for the profile page. But we will also need a custom data type called tweets. So we're going to go to new type and add tweets. Now this comes preloaded with creator, which will be the user and create a date, which we can use for the date. We need a couple new fields here. We need the tweet itself. So we can call this field tweet and make it text. And we also need the number of likes. And this will be a number field. So we'll choose number as the field type and create. Now, let's get back to the good stuff. No code programming. This tweet button needs some instructions on what to do when we click it. So we'll double click on our tweet button. We'll click on start edit workflow. And here you can see when button tweet is clicked, we're gonna add an action. We're going to use data things and we're going to create a new thing. The thing we're going to create is a tweet. So the type equals tweets. And here we need to set the number of likes. So when this tweet's created, it's going to have zero likes. That makes sense, right? And we need to set the tweet. So this is going to be this multi-line input called what's happening. Maybe we can have a better name for that, but we'll use that for now. 
Now let's try it. Okay, the tweet is submitted. Uh, we don't have any way to view the tweet on the screen yet, but we can check the table to make sure the data was inserted into the database. Let's go back to bubble. If we go to data and then app data, we can see what's in our tweets table. And here it is. Next thing we need is a grid or a list or feed to actually show the tweets in the database. And this can be done with a repeating group. So let's drag one on the screen. I'm gonna head back to design mode and I'm gonna choose the repeating group container. I'm gonna drag it on. Now we have some properties here. Type of content basically means which data type will show in the list. Uh, data source, we're also, we're gonna say do a search for tweets. Now we need to put something, we need to put a field inside the repeating group. So let's grab a text element and drag it in there and see how it repeats. This is why it's called a repeating group. Oh. It'll show one tweet for every tweet in the database. So here we can insert dynamic data and that's gonna be the current cells tweets tweet. So tweet was a data type and then tweet was a field. Tweets, 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 tweet. Current cells, tweets, tweet. Let's preview it. And you can see now we have our tweet showing in the list. Uh, there's only one tweet so far, so you only see the one row. And we probably need a few more fields here. Uh, so let's head back. Let's go back to Twitter. Remember we need, so we have the tweet, we need the username and the date uh, and maybe the number of likes. We already added these fields to the table. So let's add them to our repeating group. So now you can see we have the tweet, we have my username and date of the tweet and the number of likes. And I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit, so bear with me. One thing I'm gonna do is put the little heart icon beside the number of likes. So there's actually a element for that called icon. So we're gonna throw an icon on and we're gonna search for a heart. There's a nice little heart. This is looking pretty good, so let's see it in action. Uh, so I have the username and the date on top and then the tweet and then the heart icon with the number of likes beside it. I created a second user called Beach Boy. If I click edit profile, I can see I'm now logged in as Beach Boy. And while logged in here, I can see tweets from my original user. And I can submit a tweet with my new user. And that's it. Of course, there's a lot more functionality we can add. Uh, but these three short videos give you the basics of how to recreate Twitter in Bubble without code. I appreciate you watching. If you liked the video, please subscribe and tune into the next one. Also, feel free to leave a comment with your questions or video requests. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.